Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to learn how to add a fabric back to a crocheted panel without the need for a zip. So materials required are the fabric back, whatever colour you decide to use, yarn in the same colour as the fabric back and yarn the same colour as the last round of the crocheted front panel. And the tools required for the hand sew method are pins, a hook and a needle with a big eye. A darning needle is quite a good one to use. The first thing is to identify how many stitches there are on the last round of the crochet panel you want to attach your fabric to. My last round was the blue edge and I know that I've got 79 stitches on the edge of my crochet panel. I'm going to create a foundation treble crochet round, like the example that I'm showing here. This treble crochet eventually gets a double crochet round added to it, and it's this double crochet round that is slip stitched to your front panel. We're going to create a foundation treble crochet round that's going to go all the way around our cushion. You can see I've actually drawn a picture here. So there's our treble crochets. We're going to actually start where we've actually got the red dot on the diagram. So we start with our red dot and then we're going to do 40 stitches to the corner where we've got chain 2, another 75 stitches to the next corner, chain 2 and then all the way around 75 to 75 2 till we come back to that last corner in that last section we've got 34 stitches. Don't worry too much about understanding these numbers at the moment, it will become clear as we work through the tutorial. We now need to learn how to create this foundation treble crochet round. I use a colour of yarn as close as I can to the fabric that I'm using. My fabric is going to be cream so I'm using a cream yarn and the first thing we do is create a slip knot. I'm going to chain four because we're doing a treble stitch. And then we're going to insert our hook into the first chain that we did, the fourth chain from the hook. Now we're not only just inserting it into the front part of the stitch, we're inserting it into the front and the back part of the stitch. It can be quite tricky getting that back part, but do pick it up because it's very important, otherwise your stitch will be too loose. So we do a yarn round and pull through the stitch, then yarn round again and pull through one stitch, that's our chain stitch, then yarn round and pull through two stitches, yarn round again and pull through the last two stitches and that's our treble stitch complete. And now we need to identify where that chain stitch was that we created. We're going to go through that chain stitch, the one I called the chain anyway, and go through both loops of it, yarn round and through, yarn round and through again, here's our chain stitch that we're going to go through the next stitch, then yarn round through two, yarn round and through two. Now can you see I'm still holding on to that stitch, so I yarn round and that's our chain stitch that we're going into. Sit, yarn round through once, yarn round through once again which is our chain stitch, and yarn round two, yarn round through two, that's our treble. So as a recap, we put our hook through both front and back loops of the chain stitch, pull through and that's our stitch just started. Then we pull through again, which I call the equivalent of the chain stitch, and then through both times, is which is the equivalent of the treble stitch. And you can see, there we go, we've got our chains along the bottom, and then we've got our stitches, which is our treble stitches that were easy to count along the top. We need to work 40 stitches and then we get to the first corner. Here we go, I've done my 40 stitches. It does curve a little bit, don't worry about the fact that it does that. And I've put stitch markers in every 10 stitches. So at the beginning we've got those three chains that we did at the very beginning. That's not what we count, we count the first stitch which has got the stem on it. That's our first stitch we count and then we count along to make sure that we've got our 40 stitches. 
We're ready now to chain two. We're going to chain our two for the corner as normal and then we're going to go into that chain that we last did from our last treble. There we go, pick it up and then exactly the same as we did before. Pick up one, do our first chain and then through two and through two and that's our treble. And then we just carry on doing that all the way along until we get to the next corner. So that is 75 stitches that we are doing. And you can see what the corner looks like. We've got a nice corner with our two chains and the trebles have gone all the way around the corner. So keep going until we've done our 75 stitches till we get to the next corner. Here we go, chain two for the next corner, just a recap. So we're going to identify where that stitch is. Make sure you don't pick up the actual treble crochet itself. It is the chain at the bottom of the treble crochet you're looking for. And there we go, we are now first treble crochet done, just doing the second, and then we're ready to do another 75 stitches to get to the next corner. I'm going to keep on working until I've got all three corners done and I'll come back and see you then. I'm at the last corner, so I've now 34 stitches to do before creating the invisible join. So I've completed my 34 stitches and fastened off the yarn and I'm now ready to connect those two ends together. The chains I'm just going to use a stitch to connect them at the bottom but however the top part I want to create an invisible join as I'll be using the top part, the trebles, to double crochet into. It's really important that you make sure that your foundation treble crochet round isn't twisted before you join them together. So you can see here I've actually taped the beginning of it, the treble crochets are at the top, I've identified that first corner, I'm now going round making sure that all my treble crochets are to the outside and they're not twisted. So you can see there's a little bit of a twist there. Again, it helps the fact that all my um, stitch markers are still in as well. So again, quite a lot of a stitch going on, a twist going on there. So I now know that they're not twisted, I'm quite confident that they're not twisted and I now am going to go and tape the end of the foundation treble crochet round to the table too. I'm now ready to create an invisible join into my two trebles. If you haven't created an invisible join before, you need a big eyed needle. A darning needle is usually what I use. So I'm threading up my needle here. I've threaded my needle, now I'm going to move the tape just ready to recreate this invisible join. When creating an invisible join, you don't use the chains. You actually use the stitch that's at the top of the treble. So that V at the top of the treble is what we're looking for. Insert your needle through both the front and back loops of that stitch. And you can see it's a bit fiddly because their two ends are separate. So there we go, we're starting to create that stitch. And then we're going to insert our needle into the centre of the last stitch on the edge that we're joining. So to make sure the invisible join doesn't come apart, I'm going to weave my yarn in a few times to make sure that that join will be nice and secure. So we've got to join those two bottom edges which are our chains to make sure that our two ends are secured together nice and tight. There's no invisible join this time, it's just joined with a stitch and in my case I'm just creating an overhand stitch here. I create it twice just to completely um, make that join nice and tight and then I weave my ends in as I did before. Once you're happy that your join is secure and that the it has been joined straight all the way around, you can snip your ends off. And now we have a nice neat invisible join that we can actually use for a double crochet stitch in our next round. So we've got our front panel which is 79 stitches on each edge and that includes the two corner chains as well. 
we also have the section that we've just created which is our foundation treble round and that's got 75 stitches each side which doesn't include the corner chains. We now are going to create a double crochet round which is going to have 79 stitches around each side and that will include the corner chains too. My double crochet round is going to be in blue, the same as my, the edge of my front panel. Make sure you're working on the front of your work. The V's indicate that you're on the front of the work. Pick up the back loop only of any stitch, doesn't matter where you start. Create a chain stitch and then the next stitch, work a double crochet into the back loop only and continue working double crochet back loop only until you reach the corner. We've come to our first corner so we're going to double crochet into the first chain at the corner as per usual and then we're going to work two chains to get around the corner and then double crochet into the second chain of the corner and then we carry on and double crochet into the back loop all the way along until we get to the next corner. So I've worked my way around all of the edges and I'm nearly back at the beginning. So I'm just going to actually finish off my last stitch, pull my yarn through and I'm going to create another invisible join but this time it's an invisible join into my double crochet stitches. So my needle's already threaded and I'm going through that first double crochet, not the chain, the first double crochet. So insert into both front and back loops and then insert my needle into the centre of the last stitch. And there we go, beautiful invisible join. And I'm just going to weave my yarn so I can lose it into the stitches at the back. So before we actually attach the two double crochet sides together, we need to connect this treble crochet round to some fabric. We need to measure our front panel. So I'm going to actually make sure it's all nicely smoothed out before I measure it. I'm measuring from the grey border edge to the grey border edge, both side to side and top to bottom. And I was 41 centimetres on both of those measurements. The next measurement I want is how wide my treble, my cream edge is. It's 1.5. I'm just testing it in two places just to make sure. Yep, it's 1.5. Now, because I've got those two measurements, I know what my fabric panel is going to be. I add my 41 and my 1.5 together to get to 42.5. And because it's square, I'm cutting a fabric panel 42.5 by 42.5. So I've cut my square panel out at 42.5 all the way around and I've also put pins into the centre of each side. Our crochet that we're going to attach, I've also on each side of that put a pin in the centre so that I can actually match the centre of the crochet sides up with the centre of the fabric panel makes life an awful lot easier if you do this. So we're going to line our crochet up with our fabric. Now it's very important that the white part, the treble part, is on the outside of your fabric. There we go, lining up the outside edge with the white part, my treble. And it's the back of the crocheting that is actually upright. The front is actually a flat down on the fabric. I'm going to now pin each side in the centre, all those centres that I actually lined up, I'm going to pin them all to the fabric now, the crochet to the fabric. The next stage is to attach our crochet corner to the fabric. So you can see here I am just making sure it's the actual corner that I'm attaching, not any of the edges. Now I've attached the corners. I can see that my crochet is slightly loose. It's not a problem because I can pat it into position. So I just I can see what I'm doing here, just patting it into position to actually make it line up. 
It may be that your crochet is slightly too small and if that's the case you just need to stretch the crochet into position. Once you've got your crochet laid out, it's all ready to pin. I always start from the corner to the centre when I'm doing my pinning. Keep pinning all round until the whole section of crochet is actually pinned securely onto the fabric. We're going to actually sew, whether it's hand sew or machine sew, along the edge just below the blue crocheting. And then you can see when we turn it, we've got that really nice blue edge that will actually show. So where my finger is there, that's where we're going to actually just sew along there. So this is the hand sewing method of attaching the crochet to the fabric. I use quite a thick yarn and I'm literally going through back to front like this because it's just easier to see what I'm doing. And I'm only using a bright orange yarn so you can see the stitches. I wouldn't normally, I'd normally use the cream or the blue. Can you see that there's actually, I'm going across the actual stitch size itself. I'm going over the actual crochet stitch and then at the back I'll do the same size of stitch to come back through. And I just keep doing this, just a little running stitch is all I'm doing, all the way along, in and out, from front to back, back to front. You can see that there's a, just a tiny little running stitch running along the back as well as along the front. You can see it a bit easier at the back. So continue with the running stitch in and out until you get to the corner. When you reach the corner, you can see I go in at one side and I'm going to come out at the other side. I'm just more or less just the same position at the back, but it's actually coming out at the other side. I'm being very specific there when I'm coming out. And then you carry on on that side, going in and out again until you get to the end. Now I've only done a small sample here. So my end was reached a lot before your end. I'm just smoothing my running stitches out here because I am actually going to go back over the running stitches in the opposite direction. And that's where I'm coming through from the back here. And I'm going to go back over my running stitches. So where the spaces are, I'm going to make stitches. And again in the front, where the spaces are, I'm actually going to make stitches. So my running stitch this time is going back in the opposite direction, filling in the gaps. There we go, filling in the gap at the back there. And then once it goes back through to the front, I'll fill in the gap at the front. And I'm going to continue doing this until I've completed all those gaps. The reason I do this, it just makes it a lot stronger because you're going to be putting a cushion pad in it and everything's going to be stretching. If you leave the running stitches as they are at the moment, you actually have gaps between your crochet and the fabric. Whereas this way, you're not going to have any gaps at all once the cushion pad's inserted. And you can see here, here's the double running stitch. I'm going to pull it. It's really, really tight. No gaps at all. However, when I pull the other side, which has only got one set of running stitches, you can see you're seeing a bit, bit of the colour of the yarn and also it's really slack. Whereas that one that I've done double lot on is actually quite tight. When you get back to the end to finish your yarn off, weave it in a couple of times into the treble crochet part. Because the treble crochet part you're not going to see that. That really was just an edge for you to be able to um, sew into. And then what I'm going to do with the edge that I left at the beginning because I didn't weave it in. So if it, it was long enough you can weave it in. If not you can do what I'm doing here which is just tying a knot on it. Do make sure that your ends are very securely tied in though because when you actually put your cushion pad in again this could be a weak point if they're not sewed in tight enough. 
snip our yarn off and we can turn our crochet yarn around and we can see we've got a nice decorative edge on our piece of fabric all ready to be attached to the crochet panel. So once we've got our crochet section attached to our fabric we're now ready to attach this back to the crocheted front panel. The wrong sides or insides together we then are ready to actually slip stitch our two crocheted edges together. I'm going to start crocheting from the fourth stitch in from the corner if I count that corner chain. There you go, I'm going to put a pin in there to hold the marker and then I'm counting in this one in from the corner. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm now ready to join the two sides together. So we're going to join our front and our back together with a slip stitch. We join our yarn with a chain stitch that fixes it in place and then we are creating a slip stitch by picking up the back loops only of both the front and back panels of our cushion. So that's working a slip stitch into the back loop only all the way around our cushion. Continue working slip stitches into the back loop only until you get to the corners and when you get to the corners you'll find two chains there and you connect the two chains together with a slip stitch. Only join three sides of the cushion as we need to keep one side open to be able to insert the cushion pad. All three sides are now crocheted and we've still one side to crochet but we've got to insert the cushion pad first. Our yarn that we are going to create our fourth edge with is still attached so make sure that you leave a long loop so that it doesn't actually get pulled out when you put the cushion pad in. When you're inserting the cushion pad make sure that you push the corners of the cushion pad into the corners of the cushion cover. Once you have the cushion pad inserted, it's now time to connect those two sections that are still open so that we can close up the cushion. It's a good idea at this stage to pin the two edges together, makes it easier when you're actually doing your slip stitch row. As on the previous three sides, we're working slip stitch into the back loop only until we get back to the start of the round. When you get back to the beginning, check to make sure there's no holes. That's what I'm doing here. And you can see that there is a gap still. So I need to do one more stitch, so another slip stitch into the back loop only to fill that last hole. I'm going to work an invisible join here. So you can see there's the first stitch that I'm actually going to go through. And then I'm going through the very last stitch and that creates a neat invisible join. With the two ends that you've got left all you need to do is weave them into the inside of the cushion. You can see I'm just making tiny little stitches so you can't see them and then I will lose them. Once you've got the end woven in pull it quite tight and then snip the end off and then you'll lose the actual end into the centre of the cushion. So we have our non-zip fabric backed cushion with our crocheted front. The crocheted front that is shown in this tutorial is my spirals pattern. And of course you could make a fabric cushion with a decorative crochet edge using this method as well. If you want to keep up with the latest video offerings from Daisy Knots, please do subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.